Hey friends, welcome to the part 24. We are looking at real certification questions. Why? Because we do not waste our time in doing PhD. We are just supposed to clear the certification. See this question and it is big. We need to understand this fully. So you have one S3 bucket like so many buckets but it is on S3 and you have one lambda stuff lambda will read s3 okay and that means it will list the buckets in s3 lambda will go to s3 and will tell hey you know what you have five buckets in s3 and after it knows oh there are five buckets it will put the, these buckets where in a database which database dynamo db what will dynamo db do it is a no sql database so if you fire sql queries will it work no it will not work this database is for high performance it is like a database which has taken a steroid shot it performs that fast or you can consider this as a database which has taken two pills of viagra it performs that way very fast and that's why that's why applications like uber or applications like lyft they use such no sql databases high performance no sql databases that is why when you try to book a cab you will get all those recommendations so fast and your booking happens within seconds now there is a problem they have some issues we have to resolve see what issues first thing what you will need you what you will need this lambda will need permission right this guy here lambda will need permission to read s3 and list the buckets so first thing you have to do is give that permission to lambda function to list buckets in s3 first we have done it we have to choose two answers why because the question tells you Second, what you need, this guy Lambda will write to DynamoDB. You need that permission. So, permission for Lambda function to write in DynamoDB. These two you need. Basic, simple, clear. So, these two are my answers. Now, DNE, don't get confused. There is no uh, reason to get confused. D is telling that you give permission. Uh, to S3 to invoke Lambda. See, S3 is not invoking Lambda. S3 is not going in the morning at 6 o'clock and telling Lambda, Hey, Lambda, wake up, wake up. Lambda is going to S3 morning 6 o'clock and tell, Hey, guys, give me uh, the toothpaste, give me a towel, give me a soap, like that. So, D is wrong. And E, E is telling, uh, DynamoDB will invoke Lambda. No boss. Lambda is going to tell DynamoDB, boss, this is the list of buckets. Take it, boss, and store it in your database. That is what it will do. So, E is wrong. And A is telling cross account IAM role. See, IAM role here nothing we don't have to worry about any im role because the other options are more relevant in this scheme of things i hope you were able to understand this was a simple question by the way very simple question so the key is eliminate the sound eliminate the noise focus on the goal so we eliminated the noise like you know lambda basic execution role blah 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 crap man Think about what is required. During the certification, I usually use the whiteboard that comes in that certification at the top, middle top, you will see uh, why there is a option to launch whiteboard. I launch the whiteboard, I create this diagram and that gives me a lot of clarity. So if you get like two hours for the exam, use the full two hours, okay? Don't think that, okay, let me take a shot. I think this is not stock market. In stock market, sometimes you get lucky. Here, you know, why to put it on luck? 
because these certifications are costly ones. This certification is for $150. So I, I did a lot of certifications on my own money. So, uh, you know, I'm very cautious. Uh, I do not go unless I'm totally prepared with the concepts and everything. So if uh, I'm giving you explanations, then please, you, you can trust to a great extent on these explanations. I found it really hard. In the market, I could not find much people who can explain in depth all these answers. So whatever I am sharing, these, uh, these are all uh, the preparation I have done for the last four years. A lot of reading went into it. A lot of experience, project experience and etc. went into it. Obviously, you cannot be a master of everything. So I am doing my best. Uh, let us jump into this question now. So what are the languages you can use in Lambda? These ones. You can use Java, uh, not Java, it's Java. You can use Go, PowerShell, Node.js. If you are a Marastrian, you will understand what I just told. Python, Ruby code, and so on. You can use all these languages, man. So Python is very popular, okay? Most of the time in many projects I see, we use Python. In this example also, they are writing using Python in Lambda and they are adding items to DynamoDB. So let us break this question, okay? So you have here Lambda, you have Lambda, okay? Lambda inside they have used Python, okay? Whatever. Now, what are they doing? They are writing. Where are they writing? They are writing to the Python, uh, sorry, a uh, DynamoDB table. Okay, so in DynamoDB they are writing. So the question is telling boss when you are writing here and if the insert fails, you should automatically retry. The system should automatically retry. It should not say, hey boss, I could not write the data. It should wait. It should try after every five seconds, three, four times. And then it should say whether the insert failed or what. Sometimes what happens, there is some sort of network issues just for microseconds and your insert fails. In real life, in most of the projects, whatever front end applications we build, the uh, usually we always use microservice based architecture and we always ensure that there is a retry put in. We, we never build applications usually without retries. So here the question is telling which solution meets these requirements with minimum code changes. So you don't want to make a lot of code changes because why? It's all about laziness, man. It's all about your tendency to do less work. Uh, when you get a chance to work, you don't work. And then when you, you are not given chance to work, you start working, walking from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. That's all about it, man. See, option B is kind of not good. See, the option B is saying that this guy, yeah, like this person, will tell this person, boss, uh, send me a request. See, it's like a girl. This DynamoDB is a girl. This guy is a boy. Girl never tells a boy, usually, that I like you. It's always boy tells the girl. Another thing that I find is they are telling to use AWS Glue. And Glue, you know why we use Glue? Glue is ETL code. Here they are telling queue the items. See, glue you cannot queue the items. Where you can queue the items? You can queue them in SQS. This is meant for queuing. So glue is not meant for queuing. So C is wrong. See, one thumb rule you should remember whenever you see Lambda. Usually in real life I have seen Lambda and Boto, uh, Boto 3. We try to use together. Okay. So for me D is right. So thumb rule time. So what it is telling is uh, you want to use SDK. See, the problem with CLI here is you cannot build automatic retries with CLI. You can call put operation. That is perfectly fine. But automatic retries is something which, which cannot be achieved. That is what I think here. But using SDK. Uh, you can do that. So if you see this documentation, they are doing retries as well as exponential back off. Okay. And how they are doing? They are doing this. You see this AWS SDK for Java automatically retries request. So AWS SDK we can use. Even for Python, we will also do the same thing. 
so i hope you understood why we arrived at this answer so in in short no, thamro you remember you see lambda you see boto they are like brothers and sisters both should go together in, in any of the answer this is the trick i am telling you i have gone through so many different aws certifications and uh, this sum rule i have derived from that that they try to quiz you around lambda because they want you to use boto3 also so there is a good thing here sdk for python boto3 boto3 makes easy to integrate your python applications okay and we, it will integrate with services like s3 ec2 dynamo db and so on and if you see here it has two distinct levels one is client that is low level that provide one to one mapping okay and boto3 client and resource interfaces have dynamically generated classes driven by json models it has support for python both version 2 and 3 and it has waiters you just like in just in case if any other question comes you should know boto3 waiters it will automatically poll for predefined status changes in aws resources if you want to know what change in your aws resource aws resource can be what like ec2 instance for example and the status change status change from what from active to idle or uh, you can stop the service or something happened huh? you change the status so you can use waiters to understand that in this you see this example they are telling you you start ec2 instance and you use waiter to wait until it reaches the running state so this is one more question on lambda so you have a developer he is using lambda function and they want to log key events that occur during lambda function and include a unique identifier to associate the events with specific function invocation how is this possible see if you take a boy or a man what are the key events that happens in his life he gets graduated he gets married he has a kid these are all key events similarly lambda will also have key events and that is what you want to uh, log key events like lambda if there are five six functions so this function invoked at this time then this function ran and it called the other function which got invoked at this time these are all events key events not everything only key events so we do not capture like when this guy proposed to four five girls and it got rejected everywhere those those events are not key events key event is finally after so many tries this guy got married so lucky right after so many tries uh, if you go through the options you will see that they are trying to obtain request identifier why because the question says include the unique identifier you see this this question so there is something called context object context object is like when you run your function it passes context object to handler this object provides methods and properties that provide information about invocation function etc so this this is called lambda context object so that is what we require right context object will have that request identifier that is a unique one so the options which don't have context object like event object event object will only give you information about event so this is wrong and this is also wrong but now we have to choose between d and a so d is saying the first part is same second part says uh, architect the application to write logs to a file okay it's so only one file if they write so many logs and the other is saying you write logs to the console so we usually write logs uh, to the console that is a cloudwatch console so this would be my answer so context object gives you unique identifier and then the logs we write to the console 
usually it is a CloudWatch console. So friends, I hope you understood the concepts explained. Please hit the subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed. This is a very important channel. If you are really serious about certifications, you can go through various playlists. So many people have told that they passed the certifications because of the content on this video, the explanations on this channel and so on. So you can also click the join button below this video or in the description there is a join link become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member now in this channel we only deal with real certification questions why because we are not looking to do phd we don't want full marks we only want to pass okay that is point one. Second, i would say is there are a lot of questions which are free you become a subscriber you are getting all free access but there are some content for a very small premium you can gain access to it through cloud kernel and cloud ninja memberships what will that do is that will give you access to more questions more information so keep studying keep preparing make daily progress and that is the only way to crack certification exams and focus on the concepts you may get same or similar questions but do not rely on that just focus on the concepts and that will help you come out of this exam successfully stay tuned we will meet you in the next part